The Los Angeles Police Department has been highly successful in the fight against crime. Violent crime there is the lowest it's been in 50 years. But a long-standing challenge to urban police forces still is stopping the spread of crime before it starts, to predict crime. Serious crimes, ranging from residential burglary to homicide, often occur in a pattern of hot spots, but the mechanisms of hot spot formation and movement aren't well understood. Sometimes hot spot policing just displaces crime to adjacent areas. In other instances, it leads to a surprising eradication of a hot spot and a real reduction in crime. And a new mathematical model might explain why. Because, it turns out, there are two different kinds of hot spots. To develop the model, National Science Foundation sponsored researchers Martin Short, Jeffrey Brantingham, and Andrea Bertozzi at UCLA, and George Tita at University of California, Irvine, teamed up with the LAPD to analyze crime patterns over the last 10 years. Their model factors in the locations of possible targets, homes, cars, people, as well as general environmental cues, like levels of disorder, housing density, and surveillance. Researchers also include knowledge offenders might have about target vulnerability. For instance, tricks learned from burglarizing nearby. And what they found was two kinds of crime hotspots, supercritical, which form from a rapid chain reaction of lawlessness, and subcritical, a large spike in crime in an otherwise stable area. In a supercritical situation, small spikes in crime grow and spread. When increased police force is applied, new hotspots bud off of existing ones. They reform around small spikes in crime that continue away from areas of police presence. The crime is displaced. Police suppression is a cat and mouse game. Something very different happens when police are added to a subcritical hotspot. The surroundings are relatively stable, so when suppression is applied, the hotspot is reduced or eradicated completely, and even when suppression efforts are removed, the hotspot doesn't re-emerge. So the same policing strategy won't work for both kinds of hotspots. This key difference may help law enforcement tailor their crime strategies to different neighborhoods. Ultimately, though hotspots may be similar sizes and distributions, the research shows that looking at the dynamics of crime is important in gauging the best police response. And that could be a fundamental step toward better prediction and crime prevention strategies and an even safer future for cities like LA. For the National Science Foundation, I'm Lisa Raffensperger.